God bless you. Sir, can I have... Of course, Henry. Well, I thought since we chased the bandits out of Pribislavitz, the roads would be safer. Ah, criticizing your liege lord, are you? Oh, no, I don't mean anything by it. Just that it surprises me. <laughs> Easy, lad. I'm only pulling your leg. You're quite right. The roads really aren't safe. Mostly due to... My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Scalitz, and what I'm left with after Pribislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pigstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot, mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad. Excuse me for being so bold, but... Edge of Streaming is now with... Streaming Kingdom Come, Deliverance, streaming at PS will try to talk via chat. Drops enabled. But actually my reasons are... You see, Kuno owes me a favor, so he'll serve me free of... So... you... Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide, but really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... Who is this Sir Kuno of Rick? He's the last baron of the House of Rickwalt, which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade, like many poor noblemen do, unless they become robbers. Which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary, well, let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. That well, sounds a little worrying. Oh, it's nothing too bad. Just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh. Sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the Executioner, too. All right. I'll go and report to him. Excellent. He set up camp between Ratai and Ledechko. It's a good base for covering the province. Good luck, Henry. And watch out for yourself. I will, sir. Thanks. See you later.
I'll be with you. Uh, I'm looking for Sukuno. Sukuno. Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. He must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No. More like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. <laughs> and the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas. And the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. Don't get on the wrong side of them, though. When their blood is up, well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Ha. Sir? Ha. Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Kobler. Ah, oh, it's about time Rads had got round to this. What? Leave off with the uh, bowing and curtsy. You don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. It's not nice, brat. I can rely on you, Herman. That's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. I still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler, let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. Ah! 
You didn't fare badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. All right, good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Sir Kuno, can you tell me? Drop the Sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family um, lost it. There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier. Especially when your father's a fool. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickvald Castle. But that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only... You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Oh, you might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway, my mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window. I saw my mother there in the courtyard wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there, shrieking with laughter. Christ, that sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. The old lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. Then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later, he offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near a Kovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them. And that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me... But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you could turn your hand to something, you'd never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. Sir Radzig is all sort of... You see... Well, nobles can... <laughs> then, what... Christ. Hell is a few weeks it was a great relief. A week late, but surely I. <sighs> You're telling me. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was. And I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce. And I rode to Colleen with a delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way, and it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue, with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking, 
And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper, since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me, since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the burghers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head. And I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick. So he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzig, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time. And how could I refuse him? I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fellow. Nearly every time he was right and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in... well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus! Oh, aye. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, the pair of them. Reliable, as long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But nobody's perfect. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching? For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. What exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko, when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of, but wayfarers are sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course, he never said a word. When we were approaching Barsdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle, and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely, but he just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Oh, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk. No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. What about Jakey? Jakey? That boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like her son? 
I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... Like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. The boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same, too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? <laughs> True. Two is more than enough. Should we ride out? No point in going out now. It'll soon be dark. Come back at first light and we'll get going. All right. You can sleep here in the camp if you want. There's room enough. And you ought to get better acquainted with the... Can you tell me something about... Why not? I have a confession for... How did you end up in Ku... Ah, it's nothing new for me and my brother. We've been fighting for coins since we were old enough. Last time we rode with one long... What happened? Nah, we just wanted to come back to Bohemia. You know how it is. Where no one understands a word you say. You and Petter seem very... As brothers should be, lad. Oh, we've got the same ma, all right. I ain't got no ma, and neither does he. <laughs> and the same goes for our pa. It's probably... Oh. I'm a bit confused. We might be. We might not. A band of mercenaries found us in a village when I was still a baby, and Petter hardly walking, playing in the dirt together. Their leader took a shine to us for some reason. He took us away and raised us up. Raised us with swords for playthings and ale for mother... A few years later... He was killed in Saxony. The band fell apart, but we joined another right away. That's the way it's been ever since. So you two never had a normal life. We ride from one fight to another, risking our necks and killing who they pay us to kill. That's normal for us. Stefan. Uh, what is it you want to know, youngster? I'm curious how you went. You noticed I don't exactly fit in with this pack of felons and reprobates, huh? Unfortunately, you can't always choose your company, can you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. But how did... Oh, well, I'd love to tell you, but Kuno insisted we keep that between the two of us. And I'm not one to break a... Oh. But... Well, Kuno said it was you who wanted to keep... Really? <laughs> Are you sure of... No, I don't think so. At least... Oh, never mind. So, where did you live before? I used to live in a town before. Back there I was doing something very different. Although, now I think of it, maybe it wasn't that different in a way. If you know what I mean. Actually, I haven't the foggiest idea what you mean. You don't give any... Me? <laughs> I'm an open book, lad. Ask me anything you like and I'll give you an... Uh, maybe another time. As you wish. Shame, though.
No. Can you tell me something about... What do you want to know? Why do they call you... Because Kuno found me dangling on the end of a... Ah. I, I wouldn't call it an execution exactly. At the time, there was a proper night for you. Full of ideals and honor. I looked up to him as a hero. Then in one skirmish he was killed, and the foe took me captive. They stood me on a shaky wooden cross with my hands tied behind my back. But how long were you stuck there? I couldn't tell you. Hours. Maybe days. And Jesus! I didn't. When Kuno found me, he says I was... They cut me down and took the rope off me. Then someone gave me a kick and I coughed and came back to life.
What is it, Jakey? The stone wants to talk with you, if you can call it that. Pro what ring? Ah, no one told you about it. The fellas call it the Ring of Bakus. It's a kind of game we play. Kuno gave us this ring. It's just a worthless bauble. But when we're at the tavern, Kuno pays everything for the man who has the ring. So we steal the ring from each other and try to trick each other. Well, actually, just the others. They won't let me play. Kuno says I'm too young to get boozed up. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. But I don't have the ring, so why does the stone want to see me? He probably wants you to steal it from someone. Since you're new, the fellows will talk to you, and it won't be suspicious. All right. I'll have a word with him. Hey, Jakey, can you tell me something? Want to get matey, eh? Sure, Henry. What do you want to know? How did you end up in Kuno's band? Well, I used to be a baker's hand in Prague, but all the other fellows were always on my back, always swearing at me. Sometimes they even beat me up, took everything I had. To make a bit of coin, I started going to the tavern across the road, entertaining the rich gents with jokes, playing the fool. Sometimes someone would throw me a half groschen. One time, Kuno turned up there, and I got to talking with him. When I told him all the shit I was getting at the bakery, he offered to take me with him. Hmm. I bet you were glad to get out of there. Yeah, though it's not like they give me much peace here either. It's all, Jakey, come here. Jakey, go there. Jakey, get that. Well, surely you can't be any worse off here than in the bakery. No. Only, at the bakery, the worst I ever got was a beating. It's not like my life was in danger. But here, when those Beerman brothers are drunk, I have to keep well out of sight. How come they bullied you at the bakery? It's usually the shy ones bullies pick on. That's not exactly you. Not now, maybe. I learned a thing or two. Oh, come on, you, shy? You just said you were playing the fool and telling jokes in the... All right, I'll tell you the truth. They picked on me because I'm an orphan. The parish priest of St. Apollinaire's in Prague found me as a baby in the... I spent half my childhood in parish houses and half on the street. I see. That must have been tough. It still is tough, I can tell you that. Hey! Tell me something about... What do you want to know? How did you and Jan end up with... Me and my brother been riding with coin men since we was little. This was just another mercenary band for us. But Kuno seemed like a decent... Your brother was saying you rode before with some... He did, did he? Did he tell you why we finished with... Yeah, he said you missed Bohemia. Ha <laughs> ha! Miss Bohemia! That's good! Ha <laughs> ha But it ain't far from the truth. Yeah, missed any... Ah. Uh, he did something to... Oh, aye. While Colini was away, he broke into the trunk where the coin was kept. Took it all and wagered it with a fellow... What? The bear really... Aye. The costliest chardash we ever watched. Jakey sent me to you. Mm hmm I suppose you want me to get... Mm -hmm. Who has it? <coughs> Jan Behrman? Mm -mm. Petter Behrman? Mm -mm. I didn't quite... Mm -mm. Does Dangler have... Hmm. All right. So loud. 
like she scares the birds from the trees. 